Okay, thanks, Dave. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in this afternoon. The topic that we're going to talk about in the, today's presentation is how to capture big moves. And I'm going to walk through three of the uh, techniques that I use for specifically for day trading futures, but they can be applied to really any market and um, any time frame, so to speak. <clears throat> I will try my best to keep an eye on the question box. And if you do have any questions throughout the presentation, feel free to chime in and we'll have it looks like a little bit of time at the end as well. So let's dive in. What you'll learn in today's presentation, uh, we're going to talk about uh, tick charts, we're going to talk about uh, Hakanashi candlesticks, as well as uh, how I use those two tools in my trading and really what makes them so great. Uh, they're not a very common looked at tool, uh, but they are common to every you know trading platform uh, that's out there. So it's nothing um, super fancy and proprietary, but it's a, a way of looking at the markets that's, that's not so often uh, viewed. And we'll talk about how you can quickly identify that change in momentum so the sooner you can identify it, the sooner you can jump on board and get into the new trend. And then we'll also talk about how to get in and not just get in, but actually stay in a trade long enough for it to materialize. So I always like to start with a little bit about me. Uh, looks like there are some familiar names in the chat room, but if you're uh, new, uh, if you haven't heard uh, me speak before, I am uh, Tim Reset and I blog, uh, I have a website over at eminimind.com, and I simply share uh, kind of my straight, uh, my trading strategies, uh, my thought process uh, that I use to uh, trade the markets. I'm primarily a uh, futures trader. Uh, I've been trading since about 2006, uh, but I also do trade, I swing trade stocks, I day trade futures, and I've also uh, traded options as well. But my two primary vehicles at this point are uh, day trading the futures markets and then swing trading individual stocks. And as the seasons come and go with the market, as volatility uh, increases and uh, falls off, I may favor day trading more in, in one market or one season, and then I may favor swing trading more in another season. So it's, it's kind of nice to have uh, both of those. I've had the pleasure of uh, speaking at the Traders Expo, uh, contributing to a number of trading magazines and uh, articles and, and the likes. When I'm not trading, I uh, like to get outside and and uh, as much as possible, um, I'm an avid mountain biker uh, and racer, and I spend a lot of time uh, traveling around, in, especially in the summertime, spring and summer, uh, riding and racing and exploring new places. Always fun to, uh, to get outside, kind of away from the trading screen to really internalize things, uh, whether it's just going for a walk, whether it's, uh, you know, grabbing a cup of coffee and coming back to the screen or spending, you know, the entire afternoon. If you're day trading and you're focusing in the morning session, first couple hours of the day, you know, getting out in the afternoon, getting away from the markets to really allow yourself to process and internalize uh, things, uh, whether you could be, uh, you know, reading a book, uh, just listening to a podcast or simply just you know being on a on a quiet walk or or exercising those are all very important elements to develop as a, a competent and skilled trader uh, i'm also going to be speaking this summer at the traders expo in chicago i spoke at a number of the traders expos so it's always fun to meet traders uh, that i've chatted with through the blog and through these types of presentations. And uh, like I said, I'm an avid mountain biker, uh, former uh, ASU Sun Devil, and you can find me 
on all the usual spots under eMini Mind, Facebook, Twitter, and I do have a pretty um, big YouTube channel in terms of a lot of videos that I put out, I publish uh, over there on the YouTube channel. So let's dive into one of the three tools that we're going to talk about. So the first one is a tick chart. And uh, you know, what exactly is a tick chart? Well, a tick chart is a chart that's based on the number of transactions. A typical chart, such as a five minute chart, or a 15 minute chart, or a daily chart, is going to be based on time itself. So when we look at the markets in terms of a tick chart, we have a number of transactions that form, and that number is what forms the candle. So as opposed to five minutes of time being formed, I'm looking at the markets in terms of a number of transactions being formed and then a candle closing. So when we have candles being formed very quickly, that means that you know there's essentially more transactions occurring, thus there's more volume occurring. So it's directly derived from price, but it's just a slightly different way to look at the market. So here's a uh, pull up a chart um, of a tick chart, and you know at first glance it looks just like a traditional candlestick chart. The only difference is instead of each of these bars being, say, five minutes of time, or each bar being a daily open to close, or a 15 minute bar, or a 30 minute bar, we have what I like to use uh, 512 being the number of transactions that need to occur to close that candle. So the, the selected candle that I have here, we would have 512 transactions take place, the candle would close, and then the next candle would form once 512 uh, transactions take place and the next candle would close and, and so on and so forth. So, um, you know, it's, it's helpful to a day trader or someone who is trading on a smaller intraday time frame because we have a little bit more data to place our trades from you know a five minute chart uh, you may get a, a couple of setups every hour uh, depending on how the market is moving well with a 512 tick chart you get a lot more setups presenting themselves throughout the morning without just having a whole bunch of noise. You've probably noticed if you you know, only trade on a daily chart and then you go down to a, a 15 minute chart, things look a little bit messier compared to the daily chart. Or if you trade off of a five or a 15 minute chart intraday, then you go down to a one minute chart and all of a sudden it just looks like a whole bunch of chaotic noise. Well, by using a tick chart and the 512, uh, variation. I found that to be, especially with trading things like the ES, the NQ, uh, gold, uh, even the YM, a very good balance between giving us some actionable trade setups and not just having a bunch of noise. So the, you know, the, the numbers, this 144, 233, 512, their origin is a little bit foggy. Um, they, in a roundabout way, they are derived from Fibonacci numbers, uh, but they, um, you know, they can certainly be, you know, a 500 tick value candle is going to look pretty close to a 512, and just like a 200 tick value candle is going to look close to a 233. So. Um, the, the actual number itself is not uh, the critical point, but somewhere around 512 is uh, is where I've kind of find that sweet spot for intraday trading. 
So that's the tick chart. And then we'll come back to this in a minute when we kind of tie the three, uh, the three elements together. So first we have the tick chart. The second thing I like to, to the way that I like to look at my candlesticks rather than the traditional candlestick, just an open high, low close, I like to look at the Hakanashi variation. So it's similar to the traditional candlestick, uh, which you'll see here uh, on the left. We've got you know, red bars and green bars. Uh, some platforms is just black and white bars, but you know, a traditional candlestick is just made up of the open, high, low, and close. And we can infer or use that price data the open, high, low, close, to interpret what other traders are doing and where the market is uh, going, where the market's being pushed. Sometimes we have these big body candles in one direction, and then the next candle is a big body in the other direction. And, and when I say body, I'm just referring to the kind of the solid part of the candle. The wick or the tail is the line that then comes out of the top and bottom of the candle. So we have some candles that have these big long tails. Uh, we have hammer formations. And so all of these you know, different patterns begin to develop with the traditional candlestick. So when, when we talk about a Hakanashi candlestick, that's essentially just a variation on the opening price. So we still deal with the open, high, low, close to develop the candle itself. But instead of the opening price being the exact open of where that candle actually opens, the candle begins from the midpoint of the prior one. So if we look at example on the right, this is the exact same chart in terms of the, the data that we're looking at, same data, only uh, the candle on the, the chart on the left is the traditional candlestick. The one on the right is the Hakanashi. And the first thing you probably notice, uh, because I have my bars uh, color coded here, green and red, is you have these strings of green and then strings of red and a couple red candles in between. And, you know, looking at the chart on the left, you can kind of deduce the trend that uh, generally we've got this thrust higher, a little bit of a pullback, very short in the middle, a little bit of a bigger pullback over here. But when we come over to the Hakanashi candlestick and look at that chart, the same chart, it really helps to identify those trends a little bit clearer. And as much as possible, whenever I can train my eyes in a way uh, with you know keeping things simple on my screen, but the, the, the better I can train my eyes to see patterns, to see uh, you know different occurrences that that may only happen every couple of days, different trends that begin to form and what are those characteristics that make up the start of a trending day versus uh, you know what are the characteristics that make up the start of a choppy day the better we can train our eyes then the the quicker we can identify those trends and those trend changes so that's why i like the hakanashi candlestick the color coded bars really help give us a clear direction Uh, JT asks a really good question. You know, I've been talking about the futures markets, uh, but what about if you were trading the underlying like SPY or DIA? Uh, you could definitely use the same method, the same tick chart, Hakanashi candlestick. Uh, it's just the, the underlying instrument is just slightly different. Uh, but there are a lot of cases where, you know, especially if there's a bigger setup or a bigger support level, that I'm going to look to the SPY to place my trade and hold it overnight as opposed to, 
you know, leaving on a, a futures trade and holding that over the close. So you can definitely use uh, the same, you know, entry criteria and trade management on a different time frame or a different market or, uh, you know, any different uh, variation of those two. So the real benefit to the Hakanashi candlesticks is that the trend changes become very obvious. Now, I'm not concerned with the actual pattern of the candle itself, the shape of the candle with the Hakanashi, because, you know, it's being skewed to open at the midpoint. And so the candle shape itself doesn't give us as much information. Now, I will look at the traditional candlestick on a daily chart that helps give me some you know, inside views of what's happening emotionally with other traders and even on say a 15 or a 30 minute chart. But when I go down to a very small time frame like the 512 tick chart, I'm uh, always using the, the Hakanashi candlestick. So when we combine the 512 with the Hakanashi candlestick study, we really get this great visual representation and it becomes very easy to identify uh, those changes and the, the changes in trend. So again, a traditional candlestick on the left, Hakanashi candlestick on the right, these are both uh, the 512 tick time frame, if you will. And uh, we can see when we go from a very strong downtrend to a very uh, sideways consolidation, we go from a string of red to a series of you know four or five green bars, a couple red bars, a couple green bars, a couple red bars. Again, they could be black and white, green and red. It, it really doesn't matter. You know, there are variations or there are um, different types of bars aside from candlesticks. You know, we have bar um, uh, line charts, bar charts, candlestick charts. There's a few other variations uh, that I know exist, Renko, char uh, Renko bars and, and a few other things that uh, you probably will see in your platform. Uh, I'm using Thinkorswim, and there are a couple of variations that they include. I know TradeStation has some as well. Um, you know, the, the concepts on a lot of those I think are similar. I have not played around with some of the other bars that exist, uh, but, you know, feel free to do so. The most important thing, especially, you know, on a um, panel like this where you have a vast a variety of trade ideas and trading strategies that are kind of being thrown at you or when you're perusing uh, the interwebs, if you will, the things that, that really stand out to you or you understand or a way of looking at the market that, that just, it makes sense, it resonates with you. You can look at the chart and say, okay, yeah, I see what, what he's saying about the, uh, the Elliott waves, or I can see what he's saying about the uh, Hakanashi candlestick or the, the moving average or whatever view or strategy, you really want to dig deep and push forward with the things that are working and not necessarily try and combine 50 different things that you're learning into one strategy and also not to be bouncing around from one strategy to another. It's okay to, you know, compare two strategies and, uh, you know, take a bunch of trades using this set of parameters and then take a bunch of trades using the parameters from strategy B. But a lot of traders get in the trap of, you know, they come through a, a rough time or a rough week in the market and then kind of throw the strategy away and then move on to something else. And it's very important to be able to stick with what's, you may not fully understand it, but what's resonating with you so you can continue down that road and really, really master and understand 
that strategy. So, you know, if you can start with identifying the time frame that you want to trade, you know, do I want to be a swing trader, a day trader? Uh, if you've been day trading for a long time, uh, you probably have a couple of markets that you're familiar with. And when you look at one or two markets every day for a couple of hours or all day long, you really start to pick up on a lot of those nuances that happen. Uh, day after day, and and you can spot trend changes and changes in patterns uh, that you know someone who's bouncing around from strategy to strategy or different market and different time frame may not uh, be able to pick out. So when it comes to you know kind of the third leg, that really comes down to identifying the trend and identifying the market structure. So we can kind of all agree that the market doesn't necessarily just go straight up and straight down. It kind of moves in these stair step uh, patterns, if you will. And uh, whatever you want to, uh, however you want to view it, um, higher highs and higher lows is really the main structure of those uptrends and downtrends. And so all of these moves are driven by human behavior and the emotions that we all have, the fear, the greed, the panic, um, the wanting to you know, chase a market and, and get in or the fear of missing out. And so that's really what's making up the market moves and the market structure. So, uh, you know, the trend itself, the higher highs and higher lows, and then the lower lows and lower highs, when we can start to identify those trends, we can jump on board with those trends. So what I like to do for getting in a trade is to, uh, well, so you can see here the I annotated, you know, starting with higher highs and higher lows, uh, lower lows, lower highs. A great exercise is to print out a five minute chart of, of the, the market that you're trading and just go through and, you know, make a little annotation of where the current high uh, relates to the previous one and then go to the next low. Okay, this low is lower than the previous one. Okay, now we have a high that is now higher than the previous one. And then we have a low that's higher than the previous low. And you kind of go through the day and just make these little, you know, just LH, HH, HL, uh, you know, go through the day and identify the highs and lows. And then you can start to identify where the trend is changing from a downtrend to an uptrend or a very sideways trend where there's no real momentum happening. It's just a, just a sideways kind of slog. And so when we start with identifying the trend, then we can move into, okay, how do we want to get into the trade? And so the first thing I like to do is wait for a break of one of those swing highs or swing lows. And then I'll just use a very simple uh, retracement. And so when I'm looking at a, at a chart, you know, it all starts with identifying where are the most recent swing highs and swing lows and watching for those to break. So then I'll just draw a very simple 50% retracement and let the market pull back to that level. And I'm just simply placing my order just in front of that 50% retracement. So it starts with identifying the trend, which the tick chart and the Hakanashi candlestick help us do. And then when we can you know, identify, okay, here, here's this, this downtrend, at least for the, the time being, all of a sudden we go from lower lows and lower highs. And then if I back up here, we break the previous swing high. So we have this high on the left that gets taken out. The high where it says broke prior swing high is higher than the previous one. So in a series of downtrending, now you have the potential start of an upward move. And so by identifying that trend break and then not just chasing the market from there, but actually letting the market pull back 
and then getting in on the pullback. Uh, you know, it's kind of like you know Warren Buffett looking at strong stocks in weak sectors. You know, buying strong stocks on pullbacks, selling weak stocks on bounces. You're trying to look for opportunities to get into the market where other people aren't necessarily looking. You know, buying cryptocurrencies when uh, everyone else is uh, talking about them and they're in the media is not a very uh, sustainable strategy. Uh, but in that same, you know, that same concept can be applied to to the markets. So, in terms of getting in the trade, waiting for a, a simple retracement, that's all well and good. But now how do we actually capitalize and stay in the trade? Uh, you know, the there's a lot of traders that I talk to that they, they can grasp and actually execute getting in the trade, but then the market goes, you know, three ticks and they get scared. So they move their stop to break even and then get taken out right away. And the trade runs, uh, you know, well, in their favor. So what I found is using trail stops that are based off the market activity so such that you're letting the market tell you when to exit is the best way to kind of calm that that uh, psychological state that you that you can get in when you're in a trade and also, you know, give you the most bang for your buck. So I always put my initial stop just below the 61.8, which does happen to be a, a Fibonacci number. But it's also, you know, just a level that, you know, if the market comes back halfway, you know, I still, I see the trend still intact. If it comes back, you know, two thirds thereabouts, well, now the trend is, you know, broken or about to be broken. So with trail stops, and again, I'll use this for, for swing trading, uh, I'll use it for day trading, uh, you can really apply it to um, you know, even regardless of the entry, let's, let's strip all that away, uh, it, you know, taking the trail stop approach, uh, adding that to your toolbox uh, can be super beneficial and sometimes that's just the missing piece that can help uh, kind of accelerate your trading or get over that hump so to speak so I'll give you kind of two options the first one is you can trail each candle and when you're long a position let's pretend that these are daily bars uh, you would just be putting your stop up underneath each candles low every single day the market makes a new high the market closes you can put your stop up underneath that candles low and then the next day the market opens moves higher you put your stop underneath that next candles low uh, in this case uh, this is a, a chart from uh, intraday so you know this would be happening very quickly a couple minutes goes by market makes a new high and as soon as that candle closes you can just move it up underneath the next candles low that's a very kind of aggressive trail stop approach option two a little more conservative is to allow the market to make a high just to make a swing high and then let it pull back and once it makes another new high then you can take your stop and move it from where you previously had it up underneath that swing low and i've just got these white lines sort of annotated here and to just allow the market to run, let it pull back. Once it makes a new high, then you can take your stop from under this first line up underneath the next line, which is just the, the previous swing low up underneath the current swing low. Market breaks out again, makes a new high, pulls back. And you can just move your stop up underneath the next candles low. And, uh, you know this this approach uh, can be very helpful because it it gives you kind of a, a framework for getting out of a trade if it goes in your favor. It's easy to um, you know follow a trade or get out of a trade that you have a stop on and you get stopped out. But a lot of times, you know, what do we do when 
the trade is going in our favor, sometimes it's just a, a panic and, and hit the flatten button. So in, to get away from that, to get away from the micromanagement of the trade, having a couple of trail stop options, I mean, at least if you have a couple options in your toolbox that you can say, okay, the market's moving really, really fast here, and we're already three, four points from my entry, uh, we haven't really made a pullback. I'm going to start trailing each candle's low. And at least you have a, a tool to be able to, you know, follow along with and then let the market take you out when it breaks the previous candle's low. So to kind of tie all of these together, we've got the tick chart with the Hakanashi candlestick that help us, you know, give us some clear visual cues of the, the chart of the market that we're looking at. They help us identify the trend, and then more importantly, identifying uh, the, chin, the trend changes. That's the most important. I mean, a lot of us can look at a chart and say, yeah, it's in an uptrend, or yeah, it's in the downtrend, but we wanna be able to identify the trend change so that we can get in right away with that new momentum. And then when I'm looking to get in a trade, I'm just looking to get long and short at these 50% retracements when the market you know, makes a pullback or makes a bounce, pulls back in an uptrend, bounces in a downtrend. And then in terms of trade management, I'm always looking to trail my stop in some fashion. Now, as you get into multiple contracts, I mean, even with just two contracts, you can do a lot of damage in a good way uh, with intraday trading uh, by having you know a combination of maybe you have a profit target sitting out there with one of the contracts and then you trail your second contract so you've got this opportunity to capitalize on an initial thrust lock in profit on one of the contracts reducing your risk because now you've gone from two contracts down to one or four contracts down to two and now you've got the second half of the position that you can trail. You've sort of taken the risk out of the trade and you're, you're trading with quote unquote house money. And that can do a lot to calm your nerves and sitting back trailing your stop is a great way to, uh, to do that. So as we kind of wrap up here, I always like to end with you know, this concept that there's no shortcuts or substitute for time in front of the screen. It really takes you know, your own observations and your own time looking at the charts, looking at the markets, which is why I always say focus on one market and one time frame, and then you can expand when you master your method. So you, know, you wanna be working smart and be patient and build that discipline, and that can be on a SIM account or you can, uh, practice some things on paper or on a SIM account and then go to a live account and then you know see how you're doing and then move back to a SIM account if all of a sudden you feel like, well, I, I, I had everything down on the paper account when I went to live, all of a sudden one contract was freaking me out. I was two ticks in the green, in the black, and uh, I got scared and I just closed out of the position. So there's a lot of other things that, as we know, come into come into play when we're when we're trading with real money. So you can check out all of my uh, resources and, and tools over at eminimind.com. I've got uh, the exact trading rules that I use up there as well, uh, eminimind slash trading dash rules. And, you know, like I said, I'm trading the futures markets primarily and the uh, swing trading stocks. And these, you know, a lot of the, Articles and tools on the site are geared towards that day trading futures and swing trading stocks. Um, but there's a lot of things that I talk about that deal with building that foundation for your trading to really advance and improve and grow. And a lot of things that uh, you learn in trading can apply be applied to life. And a lot of things in life can be applied back to trading. So it's good to kind of find that balance where you can be focused on the markets for a certain time each day and then get away from the screen and do other things to balance it out. So whether you're gonna you know, 
work a, a regular nine to five job and swing trade in the evenings or day trade in the morning and then do some other kind of um, work or do no other things other than trade, but set up a framework so that your trade time is your trade time and you're very focused and disciplined when you're in front of the screen. And then when the markets are, uh, when you're away from the screen, you can internalize uh, what you've seen and what you practiced. So I want to thank everyone for attending the webinar. Uh, my email's there below, tim at eminimind.com. I'm happy to answer any questions or specific things to uh, anyone's situation. And I want to thank Dave for inviting me to speak. And I hope I wish everyone a uh, best of luck in your trading and have a great evening.